हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी सेशन ऑफ द एम सी क्यूज ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ न्यो नीटल जॉन्डिस एंड हेमरेजिक डिसऑर्डर ऑफ द न्यू बॉर्न सो वी स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चन नंबर वन द क्वेश्चन वन से इज दिस अ मेल बेबी बॉर्न बाय द नॉर्मल वेजाइनल डिलीवरी बेबी क्राइड इमीजिएटली आफ्टर बर्थ वॉज फीडिंग वेल डिस्चार्ज आफ्टर फोर्टी एट आवर्स चाइल्ड वॉज ब्रॉड टू द इमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट एट नाइनटी आवर्स दैट इज पर्टिकुलरली डे फोर विद द कंप्लेट ऑफ लुकिंग येल्लो एंड द चाइल्ड इज अलर्ट important clinical risk factors in the history of evolution for the jaundice is of course you will take the history of exclusive breastfeeding because in the first week the child can have the breast non feeding jaundice or the breast feeding failure jaundice so you will definitely want to know this particularly this history history of sibling received phototherapy if there is some genetic disorders this can be easily concluded in the family might be hereditary spherocytosis might be g6pd deficiency pyruvate kinase deficiency all are genetic disorders so this assumes the importance gestational age and birth weight because yeah, less is the age more are the chances of neonatal jaundice so therefore oebc3 all is required history of abnormal movements does not carry any significance here while evaluating the cause of the neonatal jaundice all are the clinical features of kernicterus except now kernicterus is basically chronic bilirubin encephalopathy kernicterus is the chronic bilirubin encephalopathy so if you consider here what is the parts of the brain affected basal ganglia is something which is affected and if i consider the cranial nerves this basically affects is the two cranial nerves one is the oculomotor which is affected and one is the cochlear which is affected so based on this if we say the clinical features of course choreoethetoid type of cerebral palsy because basal ganglia is affected there is sensory neural hearing loss particularly because the cochlear nerve nuclei is affected but there is palsy of the vertical gaze not of the horizontal gaze and of course this can enter into the teeth can cause dental enamel hypoplasia right so you need to understand here this is basically this portion affected so here the answer will be choice number c because this palsy of the vertical gaze Three day child delivered at hospital is now at home and on exclusive breast feeds. Mother notices yelling of the eyes. The next step is should be put in the sunlight. Phototherapy should be started. Bilirubin should be measured. Stop breast feeding and follow up at home. More of IQ question. You should first of all the parents are knowing and on day three this can be both physiological jaundice also and this can be pathological jaundice also. so basically we are interested in knowing in the first step what should is the bilirubin level so the first step to be done is that bilirubin should be measured bilirubin should be measured next one baby is discharged on day 5 of life when a swelling is noticed to be present in the scalp region this swelling is limited to the left parietal bone and is not crossing the suture line the child was delivered by vacuum delivery most likely is so there is a swelling in the scalp not crossing the suture line day 5 all of them are in the favor of the cephal hematoma subglial hemorrhage always crosses the suture line this crosses the suture line and the caput succedaneum if you see this is present at birth and this disappears in 2 to 3 days this disappears in 2 to 3 days and what we are saying here a child is having the swelling on day 5 a child is particularly having the swelling on day 5 so therefore the answer goes in favor of the cephal hematoma at 12 hours after birth in neonate the total serum bilirubin is 5 all of the following are the causes of this increased bilirubin except now first you should know what is the level to define the neonatal jaundice what we say total serum bilirubin is more than 3 mg per deciliter total serum bilirubin is more than 3 right and physiological jaundice never appears in first 24 hours the physiological jaundice this never appears in the first 
ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स राइट नेवर सीन सो द चाइल्ड इज हैविंग जॉन बीस ओनली एट ट्वेल्व आवर्स इट कैन नॉट बी फिजियोलॉजिकल रेस्ट ऑल द कॉजेज कैन बी देयर आर एच इन कंपेटिबिलिटी ए बी इन कंपेटिबिलिटी एन हेडिट्री स्पीर ऑफ साइटोसिस नेक्स्ट वन डे फोर चाइल्ड हैज जॉन डिस टोटल सीरम बिलोरोबिन इज इलेवन प्रेजेंस ऑफ स्पीरोसाइट्स ऑन पेरिफ्रल ब्लड डायरेक्ट कोम्स टेस्ट इज नेगेटिव लाइकली कॉज ऑफ द जॉन डिस इज यू नीड टू रिमेंबर लाइक दिस न्यू नेटल जॉन डिस प्लस फीरोसाइट्स दिस इज न्यू नेटल जॉन डिस प्लस फीरोसाइट्स इफ द डायरेक्ट कोम्स टेस्ट इज पॉजिटिव योर आंसर इज इरिथ्रोब्लास्टोसिस फिटालिस Your answer is erythroblastosis fetalis, which includes ABO incompatibility, and this includes the RH incompatibility. And if it is particularly given, direct Coombs test is negative. What we say is hereditary spherocytosis. So here particularly it is given there is spherocytes which are present. So that means pyruvate kinase deficiency is ruled out because in pyruvate kinase deficiency you basically get is acanthocytes. You don't get is spherocytes. Then it is given direct Coombs test is negative. They both is ruled out. So your answer is hereditary spherocytosis. Next one, ten days old child is appearing jaundiced. There is also presence of pallor and hepatomegaly. All of the following can be the cause. Now, if you particularly see beta thalassemia and sickle cell anemia, both are the mutations in the beta chain. So they both are particularly the mutation in the beta chain. And when a child is born, child is having the fetal hemoglobin (HBF). The composition is alpha chain and gamma chain. so beta chains they both appear after 6 months of age so therefore in both of these conditions you don't get is the neonatal jaundice so this can be due to hereditary spherocytosis due to alpha thalassemia due to congenital rubella syndrome but this is not particularly due to the beta thalassemia next one Three days old child is not accepting feeds properly. That is the first line to be remembered. Not accepting feeds properly. On examination, there is presence of jaundice. History of rupture of membranes twenty four hours before delivery. So there is history of rupture of membranes, which is twenty four hours before delivery. That is one thing which you get is plus there is decreased. feeds and both of them they are pointer towards the neonatal sepsis both of them they are the pointers towards the neonatal sepsis right although the child is having jaundice now third day this can be particularly physiological maybe pathological but out of the choices given your first answer should be blood culture to be done because you want to rule out the neonatal sepsis you want to rule out the neonatal sepsis mother is having seizure disorder and taking phenobarbital during pregnancy there is risk of hemorrhagic disorder of the newborn child will have bleeding on day now when we consider the hemorrhagic disease of newborn first is the early onset and in the early onset the hemorrhage is between 0 to 24 hours after birth and why there is early onset mother was taking certain drugs Which interfere with carboxylation of clotting factor. Which interfere with carboxylation of the clotting factors two, seven, nine, ten by vitamin K. By vitamin K. So here in this condition. the mother is taking phenobarbital which is a hepatic enzyme inducer drug this will interfere with the carboxylation of the clotting factors 2 7 9 10 by vitamin k resulting in the early onset that is within 24 hours of birth that is within 24 hours of birth is in neonatal jaundice the cause of jaundice should be determined in all of the following condition except this is another way of asking whether the jaundice can be physiological jaundice can be pathological right so if particularly 
the jaundice is pathological then we are interested in knowing the cause of the jaundice in pathological jaundice the first line is true serum bilirubin increases more than 5 mg per deciliter per day the jaundice persists after 14 days in a term child and after 21 days in preterm child after 21 days in the preterm child direct bilirubin more than 1 is considered to be pathological so out of this choice given the least important is jaundice appearing on day 3 because this day 3 jaundice can be physiological although this can be pathological but this is can be physiological but in the first three condition you always need to find out what is the cause of the jaundice so in this i have discussed some of the questions which are related to the neonatal jaundice right i hope you are enjoying the series thanks